G'day guys, this is just a sort of a supplemental on potassium. People have been asking a number of questions and stuff like that. So I thought I'd better do something to sort of uh, cover that sort of area. Let me just share the screen. Okay. So I did mention last time about around about 200 milligrams we excrete from urine on a daily basis. So that's the the amount and then you've got about um, what they're talking about this 400 to 800 milligrams and all that that is sort of loss um, in a sense um, that ob obligatory losses which there may be very little from sweat as we said for a lot of these sort of things there's you know for general biological processes you'll lose a bit you'll use a bit in so as cofactors in some enzymatic processes and stuff like that. So these are the sort of numbers that they're actually talking about and stuff like that. Um, if you're not basically eating food and let's say you're fasting, you're not going to be using much at most for some of the few um, enzymatic processes that are going to be involved with um, autophagy and stuff like that. I would say, that may get to about 250 milligrams excretion and some, um, some use. So it's going to be very, very small. That can actually be covered with my favorite supplement, which is basically the cream of tartar. So, and if you get, let's just go to, Two grams. Yeah, that's a bit too much. Anyway, two. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> Commercials. And two grams. You're basically getting there's no fats, but obviously fats don't have an effect. New protein. And when it comes to, it's just a bit of starch. There's none of the actual sugar. There's just a bit of starch, which is so minimal. It's a blip. It's not going to affect mTOR. It's not going to activate any IGF-1 um, or insulin in any way. Because basically, you'll actually get a bigger, you know, mini, mini um, increase of these sort of um, anabolic hormones as you're going through this pulsatile effect of fasting, which I've actually explained before, which is basically this autophagy. You actually recycle some organelles and, you know, and fats and proteins inside the cell. You release them into the bloodstream. So immediately that actually will raise slightly some of these anabolic pathways. And that's when autophagy goes down. Then the body uses those and then autophagy goes back up once the actual reduction in these proteins moving around. So this isn't going to affect you at all. It's going to be a blip. There's more that comes out from autophagy that has a bigger anabolic effect. So pretty much ignore it. You're basically, you're basically using this to get your potassium. You know, as you can see, it's pretty much, there's very minor in terms of calcium, iron, phosphorus, you know, a bit of sodium. It's, it's basically bugger all. Majority here is coming, basically, as you can see, is from potassium. So that 248 milligrams from two grams which is half a teaspoon is basically all you basically need to cover your potassium needs for the day of excretion um if that is a worry for you when you're when you're basically fasting and the rest is salt to keep everything in and to prevent keto flu and all those sort of other things keep your sodium up um, and you uh, find you don't need any of this fancy stuff out there, um, which is very expensive. Um, so 
that pretty much can cover that side. Just wanted to to basically um, nail that to an to an extent because everybody basically is crazy about supplementation and all that. So your body doesn't need. I mean, I've done experiments in the past where I've lowered my sodium level, upped my potassium, not into the danger zones, you know, because there are risks, especially you can heart failure if it's too high um, and magnesium and all that. And I still had cramps. Then I increased the sodium and it fixed it because sodium is so important in basically its regulatory role within between in regards to intra and extracellular fluids. So get your sodium right. And the other stuff will build up over time. As you take in the food, you can supplement for a very short amount of time when you are coming off an inappropriate diet to, and you know, you're, you're helping somebody correct that. That's fine. I've, I'm not against supplementation to fix deficiencies but they're not a panacea and they can be problematic in continually to cause imbalances. Because remember the ionic bonds that a lot of these sort of, ion, um, uh, you know, minerals, their ions basically are bound in a certain way that those Vitello MTs basically are designed to deal with those bonds and to bind appropriately. This is why basically food has the right sort of um, state or chemical state in, um, in which um, these proteins or enzymes where they use as cofactors really can, can bind and connect together properly. You know, food is very different. It has a different bioavailability because it is structured in such a way where the body has evolved, co-evolved with the food for a very long time and has, de and has developed the right enzymes and proteins to handle and manage all those um, elements, those micronutrients. Supplement companies never get it right. Supplement companies, that's why they have to give you these big doses. They can't do it with potassium because it's too dangerous. Um, with a lot of free flowing potassium around the place can really cause havoc and put it at risk your heart and arrhythmias and all sorts of things. So, but they can do it with other supplements and that's what they do. And they, they just become expensive urine or expensive feces. So don't get sucked into that stuff. And, you know, you just need to understand that. Um, there are easy, cheaper ways and then focus on the food and focus on keeping the sodium up. We used to consume up to 10 times more sodium than before refrigeration. Nobody had electrolyte issues back then. Why? Because I was getting so much sodium. Everything remained in good homeostasis. It's the low sodium diets that have created this, these problems. And the only reason is that insulin masks it. With high insulin, you get waterlogged, you retain all these fluids, and it's very hard to, it, it retains a lot of these electrolytes. What do you think Walter Kempner, when he did that um, high carbohydrate, low fat, low protein diet, back in the 1930s, he eliminated all electrolytes because he knew the water retention really retains a lot. And you could actually get far, you know, like overdosing in a lot of these are minerals. So that's what's masking everything. It's the insulin. Plus it gives you the high blood pressure and stuff like that, but that's what's masking it. So you eliminate that, you start dumping like mad. The only thing that can stop that is sodium because it can regulate those pumps, the gradients there to prevent that. That's what you need. Stop fearing sodium. We used to consume 10 times more it doesn't cause blood pressure. It's insulin that causes water retention and causes blood pressure. You know, one gram of glucose will hold on 3.8 grams of water. You know, that's the problem. So let's get over this sort of situation, this madness. The other issue, 
This is from the, basically the Center for Cancer Research. High levels of potassium inside tumor suppress immune activity. Scientists at the National Cancer Institute Center for Cancer Research have discovered that an abundance of potassium inside the tumor dampens immune responses, helping the tumor evade the body's defenses. In animal experiments, genetically equipped immune cells rid themselves of potassium, made them more effective at fighting cancer. The findings published September 14th, um, 2016, it's very recent, in the Journal of Nature, suggests that tactic for, tactics for improving the effectiveness of cancer immunotherapies. So you think high potassium is the way to go? When you consume high, um, I'll give you an example. Glycolysis basically requires far more in the TCA cycle, require far more than lipolysis in terms of magnesium. There are more steps through those enzymatic steps and they require far more magnesium. It's like thiamine. Thiamine again, I've got a study, but I don't, I'm not going to bother actually showing it to you. At some stage, I, I, do, I want to do a separate video on it. Um, it's an older study, but it actually shows that that a lot of the actual diabetic diabetics and the glucose dysregulation occurs with low thiamine and low um, and low magnesium. It's because glycolysis requires far more than lipolysis, and that's the thing. That you need, you guys need to understand because everybody's sort of tuned in um, to when it comes to that sort of stuff. But the reality is that our bodies, when they you eat a species appropriate diet, you're getting the things in the right order in the right amounts that are required. We're not missing out, guys. Compared to the excretion rate, we're getting more than enough. I've shown that and demonstrated that. You just need to get it from the food, and the body will self regulate. And that is much better than doing these crazy things with supplements. And if, you're, if you've got cancer, you better keep potassium down if you want your immune system to fight it off. Okay? So the only reason why we keep on recommending higher and higher levels of potassium is because people are eating more and more carbs and you need more potassium, more magnesium to deal with the carbohydrate load. That's the problem. And you need basically to keep the sodium down so you're not waterlogged. So basically, you know, it's like um, deal with the sodium out of the processed food, up the potassium. I mean, what's next? They're going to recommend 10,000 to try and keep the sodium levels and the high insulin down? They'll probably won't because that's dangerous for the heart. But you know what I'm getting at? It's become ridiculous. It went from 1,600 to 2,000, then to 13, um, uh, 34, um, 3,500 and now 4,700. And it has been, keep, it's been going up in, in, this, in this way because, and we've been pushing down sodium in order to try and actually um, force more water. And then on top of that, it still doesn't basically work. So what do we do? Because insulin is inhibiting all this. So what? So what are the the boffins come up with? Oh, let's create all these anti um, diuretic drugs and like try to force, um, uh, you know, the water out. So let's damage the kidneys even more. You know, so that's the reality. Don't fall for the for the for the nonsense. Um, these are good studies on tumors and stuff like that, and the protectiveness of potassium for tumor cells. If you've got cancer, I wouldn't be basically supplementing with potassium unless you've got a death wish. So pretty much I wanted to cover some of those points because I'm sick and tired of people and their craziness about you know electrolytes as if they can't get it from the food. You just need to increase your sodium levels. Stop fearing fat and sodium. How many times can I say that? You know, most people are getting high levels of glucose or high levels of, um, uh, you know, insulin effects or whatever, because one, they eat a pack of lean meat and, and have rabbit starvation on the one hand, carnival yogi and many others. 
And then on the other hand, you've got people that fear salt like a, like the plague, you know, because they've been brainwashed to such an extent. Salt is your friend. Fat is your friend. Get over it. Okay. Anyway, I've had my rant. <laughs> See you guys.